Love and peace to you. Good evening and welcome to Redeeming Love Christian Church. I pray that you are experiencing the redeeming love of God that redeems, unveils, and empowers. I'm so very thankful to have you here with us. Thankful to the Lord that he has purposed you to be here. You're not here by happenstance, but you are here by divine appointment. However, I have another assignment on this evening, and therefore I won't be present with you live. There is no distance in the spirit, and so though I won't be here with you live, I'm certainly here with you in spirit. I want to encourage you along this wise. We'll be playing this past Sunday's service. Uh, we'll be replaying that for your uh, hearing. The word says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so this is a wonderful opportunity for you to rehearse the word of the Lord in your hearing to you, for you to get it down in your spirit, for you to get it down and allow the Lord to write upon the tablets of your heart that you might not sin against him. It's imperative that we become hearers and doers of the word, not just hearers only. And so as we hear the word over and over again, faith comes by hearing and we apply it to our lives and we become doers of the word thereby satisfying God's purpose and intent in our in increasing our faith and so again welcome to the service tonight the Lord is going to bless you mightily as you open up wide your ears to hear allow the Lord to write upon your heart and prepare and plan to do that which you have heard the Lord bless you Amen. But grab your Bibles and turn with me to 1 Samuel chapter 16. We're going to make a transition and we're coming out of divine resources and transitioning into divine assignment. So I want you to get ready, get your pen, get your paper so you can take your notes. It's going to be so imperative. Um, today I'm, letting, I'm laying the foundation for which it uh, will we'll, uh, build upon. So I need you to get something to write with, get something uh, that you can, you can keep. Don't just get a piece of paper and then you're going to lose the piece of paper. You're going to forget where you, where, you, uh, where you put it, where you set it. Get you a notebook. Get Get you an iPad, get you something where you can, uh, you have a repository of your notes so that when you can, when you need to go back and reflect and look at those notes again, you have a place that you can go and do that and, uh, and not lose that information. Amen. Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 6, I'm going to read verses uh, 1, I'm sorry, chapter 16, 1 Samuel 16, I'm going to read verses 1, then I'm going to switch over to verse 4 and read verse 4 through 11. Amen. You read along with me silently as I read aloud. The word of the Lord says, and now the Lord said to Samuel, how long will you mourn for Saul? For Saul, for, for, I'm sorry, I can't get my mouth right today. How long will you mourn for Saul? Seeing, say that word for me. Saul, there you go. How long will you mourn for Saul? Seeing I have rejected him for reigning over Israel, fill your horn with oil and go. I am sending you to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided myself a king among his sons. So Samuel did uh, what the Lord said and went to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said, do you come peaceably? And he said, peaceably, for I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come uh, with me to the sacrifice. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. And so it was when they came that he asked uh, Eliab and said, that he looked at Eliab and said, surely the Lord's anointing is before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, uh, do not look at his appearance or at his physical structure because I have refused him. Because I have refused him. Not because I didn't pick him, but I, not because I didn't consider him, but I have refused him. We're going to get into that. For the Lord does not see as man sees, for man looks at the outward appearance. Stop being so focused in and so caught up on what somebody looks like. Stop being, you know, I've come to understand, I just got to park here for a minute before I read the rest of the text. I've come to understand that we live in a society of fake. 
we live in a society of not real. We live in a society of appearances, but there's no, there's, 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 there's no uh, real foundation. We, 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 there, there, there's no uh, uh, substance to it. We see appearances, but if you get behind the appearance, you'll see there's no real substance to what it is you're seeing. I just had to park there for a minute because we live in a society of fake. Let me go on and say what I need to say. And uh, 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 um, uh, so, so, um, uh, uh, but look at, at the heart. So this is what it says. So, uh, and the Lord does not see as man sees for man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. So Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. And he was, uh, and he said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shamal pass by and neither, and said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. And Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen these. And Samuel said to Jesse, are all the young men here? Then he said, there remains yet the youngest. And there he is, keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes. We will not rest until he comes. We will not take the position of being settled until he arrives. So I want to share with you this on this on this morning, I want to share some things that are pertinent, uh, pertinent to us understanding. And this is for, for the sake of title. This is called the anatomy of divine assignment. The anatomy of of divine assignment. I want you to understand uh, that I've carefully chosen and, and selected my wording uh, in the title to instruct you and help you understand the underpinnings of the anatomy or structure of divine assignment. It's important that you understand as it relates to anatomy that it speaks to the study of the bodily structure of a living organism. Or, or organism. Your assignment is a living organism. I want you to understand that. I'm going to say that one more time. Your assignment is a living organism. It finds its life in you as much as you find your life in it. Let me, let me say, because let me say that one more time. It finds in li its life in you as much as you find your life in it. Here, here's the text that supports that. This is Jeremiah 1, 4 and 5. This is what it says. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Here's the part I like. Before you were born, I sanctified and ordained a sign, gave you the assignment as a prophet to the nations. He says, before you were born. Before you were alive and living in this earth, I had given you assignment. I knew you before you were even formed in your mother's womb. I gave an assignment to you, and then I birthed you based on the assignment that I had given. Your life is just as integrated in the assignment as the assignment is integrated in your life. I want you to get that down in your spirit. Because see, what I found, co is that we have a generation of individuals seeking and asking and trying to find out what is my purpose? What is my assignment? I want you to understand something. There are too many of you are too caught up in trying to identify it. But the Lord says, just start working. The Lord says, just start doing some stuff. I want you to look at the text. I want you to look at the text. After all seven, after all the sons that Jesse had passed, with the exception of one, uh, uh, Samuel said, are these all your sons? Are, are these all the young men? And he said, there remains yet the youngest. And there he is. That's present tense. There he is, it says. There he is keeping the sheep. And in fact, when Samuel shows up, Everybody's there but David. And where we do we find David? We find David working in the assignment where in which his father had instructed him. I'm trying to get you to understand something. There are some things that are going to be revealed in the goal. There are some things that you're going to get while you're working in the assignment given to you by your father. There's too many of you all that don't like the assignment. So you buck 
the system. There is a process toward walking in divine assignment. There is a process to, that, that, that you have to go through because you're going to need the things necessary in the process that the process helps to, helps to develop in order for you to get to the place where you are ready for the assignment. I'm just trying to help you understand some things. I'm just trying to help you understand the importance of this. Uh, I, I want you to understand that your assignment is a living organism and you find life in it as much as you fi it finds life in you. It is often revealed by de uh, uh, dissection and separation of parts. We, uh, many, uh, some of you all, and, and I, this is funny to me because, uh, and I don't even know if co ever shared this, but I'm going to share it. So... She, when she started school at OU, she started in pre-med. <laughs> she did. She started in pre-med. And I believe she would have been a great doctor. I believe she would have did fine. But they got to the place, Pastor Tazzle, where they had to dissect an animal. <laughs> And then, and then she, she went to the lab, and, and you know, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just thinking through my mind uh, of the picture that's in my mind's eye. She gets to the lab, and these little animals are on trays, and, you know, you got your little scalpel and all kind of stuff, and the students are standing around, you know, their particular animal. And, uh, 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 and then and the, and, and the instructor is saying, okay, we're going to dissect the animal. And I could just see, as I know my wife of almost 30 years, I could just see her looking at that animal, looking at that professor, Looking back at that animal and saying, I ain't going to be able to do this. And she could. Not only could she not do it, she decided to change her major. Because she was like, I'm not going to be able to do that right there. But, but, but this is, a, I want you to understand what's happening here because the understanding, listen to this, is often revealed by, by, by the, the, the process of, of uh, dissecting something. By the separation of parts. So many of us don't understand the whole picture because we don't understand the importance of the parts. See, we, we get to the whole and we want the whole. I want to be a doctor, but do you understand the parts that it's going to take for you to become a doctor? We want, we want to be the attorney, but do you understand the parts that it's going to take for you to become an attorney? I want to be a preacher. Do you understand the parts that it's going to take for you to be a preacher? I do you one better. Do you, you want to be a prophet? I'm a prophet of the Lord. No, you're not. You just have been used by God to say something because you have not gone through the process necessary and the steps necessary to become a prophet. I am coming to an understanding that I would not want to be a prophet for all the tea in China because I understand that prophets have to go through a process of heartening. Prophets have to go through a process of heartening. They have to have thick skin. And you know how you get thick skin? By folk bothering you and messing with you and folk and dealing with you uh, uh, the wrong way and, and rejection and not handling you, handling you correctly. And, and because there will come a time when you're called into the office and you've gone through the segments and the parts and you come to a place where the Lord says, I've got a word. I want you to deliver to the nations and you've got to stand before the nations and say thus says the Lord and when they look at you you can't be bothered by the way they look at you you can't pull back and, 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 and succumb to how they're looking and when you give the word they're shaking their head like nope nope I don't know what you're talking yes they do they know exactly what you're talking about but you've got to have enough thick skin because of the process and the steps necessary to harden your skin, to stand before them with shoulders drawn back and flat-footed and stand your ground and say, I don't care what you say. I don't care how you look. I know what God has said. It's a process. I'm trying to get you to understand the process. I'm trying to get you to understand that even in assignment, there is a, 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 a process. We've got to dissect the, 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 the segments to better understand. You've got to dissect. And so we're going to dissect this, this text. We're going to, we're going to, we're, it's going to take us several weeks, but we're going to start today. We're going to start today. Listen to this. We find in the Hebrew word, assigned, in their native uh, uh, tongue, 
to be the word Nathan. It is defined, it means, listen to this, to give, to add, to apply, to appoint, to ascribe, to bestow, to bring forth, to occupy, and like this one right here, or to awaken. To awaken, that means something's in you that sleep, that's getting ready to be woke up. There's something in you. God's put something in you. Tell somebody close in close proximity to you. Tell them there's a divine assignment in me that's getting ready to be awakened. Tell somebody else that wasn't the right person. Tell somebody there's a divine assignment in me. It's been sleep. And there's, I've been going through a process. And I've been, God's been working some stuff out of me. And he's been working some stuff inside of me. And because of that now, the, the, the divine assignment is getting ready to be awakened. We find David. David wasn't even considered. <laughs> David wasn't even considered to come amongst the young men, his other brothers, to be paraded in front of the prophet Samuel, to be considered. He wasn't, he wasn't, even, he wasn't even thought of. He was back there working. He was in the field, tending and keeping the sheep. It's interesting to me because there's some family dynamics that you're going to have to contend with where your assignment is concerned. There's some things that you're going to have to get over and you have to overcome where your family is concerned to get through and get, get to the place of assignment for your life. There is nothing as difficult as getting over the hurdle of family opinion where your calling is concerned because those are the people that should encourage you and speak into you and push you up and push you forward. Instead, these are the people in David's life that don't even consider him. I want to say to you, I want to say to you that their consideration concerning you or the lack thereof does neither qualify or disqualify you from the assignment. But that is a process, that is a section that you're going to have to walk through in order to get to your divine assignment. You're going to have to turn a deaf ear when you know God's called you and you know what he said to you and you, you know what he spoke to you. And you have the people who are most important to you, the people who are most significant in your life, those people coming against what you know God has said. You're going to have to overcome that hurdle. You're going to have to come not even being considered. You're going to have to overcome the fact that they choose you. Let me tell you something. They don't, it doesn't matter whether they choose you or not. All that matters is that God has chosen you. It doesn't matter whether they choose you or not. All that matters, hear me now, all that matters is that God has chosen you. And the Bible says this. That he stands over his word to perform it. If he spoke a thing over you. If he opened up his mouth. If he said I've purposed you. And called you as a prophet to the nation. If I've called you as a pastor. If I've called you as a doctor. If I've called you as a lawyer. Whatever I've called you to. I must stand over you until it's performed. You got to understand the dynamic of being stood over. That now I have a covering. That no matter what comes my way. <laughs> and when you, when the Lord is standing over you, <laughs> you have a covering. I'm trying to tell you, you are protected. Just trying to help you understand some things as, as we dissect the anatomy of divine assignment. So, so, so here we, again, the assignment, the word assigned in the Hebrew is the word Nathan. It, it's defined as to give. To add, to apply, to appoint, to subscribe, to bestow, to bring forth, to occupy, to awaken. Listen, what's interesting to me is that we list these, all these, we look at all these, all these terms. These terms speak uh, 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 to some very significant things. But none of these terms speak to the approval or agreement of the one being assigned. None of those things. You don't give, you don't add, you don't apply, you don't appoint, you don't ascribe, you don't bestow, you don't bring forth, you don't occupy. Neither do you awake, awaken. It is not the one who is given the assignment that has to agree or give approval 
Because in that same text in Jeremiah, if you look one verse down, he says, uh, he says, uh, 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 I am uh, uh, me a prophet to the nations, but I am but a youth. He was like, God, you made a mistake. See, some of y'all are saying that with your actions and God saying some things to you and spoken some things over you and giving you some things to do. And what you're saying is when you push back, I'm just, God, you made a mistake because, you know, I'm just too young. And, you know, I've got some other things in mind. I've got some other things on my agenda. I've got some other things I want to do with my life right now. And, I, you know, I'll come back and see me in about five or ten years because, you know, I got a five and ten year plan. While you have your five and ten year plan, God has an eternity plan. His plan is eternal. Yours is limited. He is as infinite. Yours is finite. You got your, take your five and ten year plan and, and, and tear the paper up. If it does not get in line with what God has said for you, because this is what I know about God. He will not, by his spirit, invade your will. But he knows how to make you willing. He's not going to invade it. But he knows how to make you come crying. I yield, I yield. What must I do? He knows. He knows just what situations to put you in. I, I, I want to get this down in your spirit. I want, you to, I want you to understand what I'm trying to say to you. The Lord has placed an assignment in each of us to be awakened at his appointed time. The Lord has put something in you. The only action, the only action, the only one who has a, 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 a authority over the assignment in your life. It's not you. It's the Father. It is the one who has given the assignment. The only one that can retract it, the only way they can pull it, only one that can pull it back is God. And don't you think for one second that God won't pull it back? Because here we find the man Saul. And here we find a conversation that God is having with Samuel. In the first verse of chapter 16, and Samuel is lamenting, he's crying, and God asks him, how long are you going to cry? For I have rejected him. I have taken the kingdom away from him. I have pulled it as a rug from underneath him. He is no longer over it. He is no longer king of it. He is no longer assigned to it. I have taken his assignment. Hear me now. I have taken his assignment and I have given it to another. What do you mean? God will take an assignment. If you don't believe me, ask Judas. When Judas did and betrayed the Lord and took his own life, the Bible says his assignment, his bishopric is taken and now given to another. Trying to help you understand, if you're not willing to walk out your assignment, if people mean so much to you that you lose sight of who God is and the fact that he is the Lord God mighty and besides him there is none other. If you lose sight of that and you're more concerned and focused about what people say about you, I guarantee you that your assignment will be in jeopardy. Well, here we have, here we have the text. Let me get to the text. Let me get to the text. Uh, the Bible says, and now Samuel, the Lord said to Samuel, how long will you mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? It's interesting because uh, that word rejection is the same word that God uh, uses uh, later on in the text when he's talking about the firstborn of Jesse. <laughs> uh, 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 it's interesting how Saul is rejected and the kingdom is taken from him. And the, and the, and the, and the text says uh, Eliab is rejected. <laughs> it's interesting because when you look at that and you understand that the, 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 the rejection is not just about uh, uh, I said no. <laughs> the rejection comes with some definition. It's interesting because, because it's one thing for you to be turned down. It's something altogether for you to be rejected. Listen, uh, uh, to be refused in the Hebrew is the word mawaz. Mawaz is defined as one, uh, 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 one who is morally debased, depraved, despicable. A vile person. Uh, so, so, so it's not just 
It's not just that you're rejected. It's not just that you're refused. There's some stuff in you that the process requires removement of. And if you don't follow the process, then you cannot walk in the assignment. We all come with some stuff. Can I say that? Can I say that without you all looking at me funny? Well, I just say it that I'll say that I came with some stuff. We all come with some stuff. We all have some issue. We all have some challenge. We all have some struggle in some places where only the God that we serve could free us from. Part of that process comes with a much needed dependency on God. Some of that process comes with an understanding that, that, that uh, even as Paul said, Lord, I've sought you three times uh, concerning this, this issue, concerning this challenge, this thorn in my flesh. And, and uh, three times have I, have I sought you concerning it. And the Lord's reply is, my grace is sufficient. Because of the revelation given unto you, I got to keep you coming back to me. Because of the revelation, you have, you, you, you have the propensity to think more of yourself than you ought. So I got I to gotta keep you in a position and in a place where you keep coming to me. Let, 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 me, get to, let me get to my text. I got to get to my text. So, so how long will you mourn for Saul? See, now I've rejected him uh, from reigning over Israel. Fill your horn with oil. Fill your horn with oil and go. I am sending you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided myself a king. Saul was a king selected by the people. God did not select Saul. The, the people selected Saul. But he said, I got somebody else who is now coming to fill the vacancy of the assignment that has a heart for me and not concerned about what folk think. He says, I got, I picked, I provided myself a king among his sons. Here's point one. Here's the first point. If you're writing, write this down. There are some assignments coming to you because others have failed to follow the instructions of their assignment. There are some assignments coming to you. But, but I want you to understand something. It's not a secondary fault as God uh, 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 stands at the end and walks toward the beginning. He knows all. He sees all. There's nothing that escapes him. I want you to understand some things that nothing catches him off guard. Nothing catches him by surprise. And so while the people chose Saul, God was setting David up. I'm going to help you understand that in just a second. I'm going to help you understand the setup. I'm, listen, I'm not, saying, I'm not saying this to point out the failures of others. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to even focus on that. What I'm saying is. Because I want you to understand that the assignment of the Lord comes with strict instructions that you must follow. You must follow what the Lord has subscribed, what he has, he has given you a prescription. You can't deviate from it. You can't deviate from it. You know, you know it's interesting, and I'm going to say this to you. It's interesting because... The Lord, the Lord does some things, and, and if you look at the text, you'll see God working and, 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 and how things are intertwined together because God, listen to me, I want to say this to you. I want you to get this in your spirit. If you don't write anything down, write this down. The Lord always gives you an assignment. He always gives you an example, an example of one who follows the right way regarding his, ass his assignment. The Lord will always give you an example of someone who fleshes it out in front of you. Someone who walks it out. Someone whom, whose life you can mimic. Someone that you can gather things from. And some things uh, uh, that will help you on your journey. I want you to understand because uh, even as Samuel is walking out. And I just got to say this because this fits right here. Even as Samuel is walking out, all that God has, has said. It. Now, I want you to understand. He's upset. He, he's, he doesn't feel, you know, he, in fact, he's, he's, he's mourning. He's crying. He's crying about what's happened to Saul. 
And here's the thing. The Lord says, how long are you going to cry? How long are you going to mourn? Uh, you can mourn, but, but there comes a time when now you're going to have to stop mourning. Because I've got some instructions. So now, get yourself to Bethlehem. There's a man there named Jesse that's got some sons. And one of his sons, I have chosen for myself to be a king. I can see in my mind's eye, Samuel, wiping his face, getting himself together. Go, go, go wipe your face. Go splash some water on there and get yourself together. I want to say to some of you all who are mourning some lost things, who are mourning some things that you thought were significant, that you thought were so significant to your life that you just couldn't live without them. You thought they're so significant to your life that you couldn't move forward without them. I want you to hear the word of the Lord today. For the Lord says, how long are you going to mourn? Wipe your face. For the instructions follow. He's trying to get you to understand that the Lord will give you a season, a minute, a time. I won't even call it a season because it ain't long enough to be a season. But he'll give you a moment. But with that, he's also giving you some instruction. Wipe your face. Now it's time to move forward. And we get stuck. We get stuck. How many of you all have gotten stuck? Because the one who said they were going to be with you left you. The one who made promises to, to you are no longer keeping those promises. And the one who said, I'm going to love you. I'm going to be a friend to you. I, I'm a friend to stick as closer to a brother. All that stuff. All that stuff that sounds real good. And they did just the opposite. And then you got stuck. You got in the bed and you threw the covers over your face. You, you pulled the, 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 the shades down and, and be, because the one. And, and listen, let me say this. All of us have our one. Every one of us have our one. It's that one person that'll break your heart to the degree that you don't even want to get out of bed. It's that one person that messes you up so bad. That you can't even go forward and you get stuck right where you are. I came to tell you today is the day to get unstuck. Today is the day of your liberty. Today is the day that the Lord sets the captive free. You've been held captive by your own mind. But the Lord says, I called you. I formed you. I put an assignment in you. And I stand over you to perform it. Get up and walk. Towards your assignment. So listen, listen, I, I want you to understand the, the power of assignment because in verse 16, I mean chapter 16, and, and, and I, I, I'm skipping a little bit, but I'm going back. Uh, but I gotta say this because I need you to understand this moment, this point. Because he's he's asked Saul at the beginning, he's asking Saul, how long you gonna mourn? How long you gonna mourn, Saul? How, how long you gonna cry? Seeing, he says, How long you gonna mourn him? Seeing. How long are you going to mourn him and I have already? How long are you going to mourn him and I have already I seen you see what I'm doing and yet you're still mourning the past. But the Lord says, seen how I have already. I've already rejected him from reigning over Israel. Can I say something to you? Wipe your face because your tears are not going to move God. Your tears are not going to move him regarding the assignment that he has for you to accomplish. Wipe your face. Wipe your face. What do you mean, God? I can't do this no more. Wipe your face. I got an assignment for you. Wipe your face. I got an assignment. God, it's too hard. Wipe your face. Seeing that I have rejected him. Wipe your face. Get yourself together. Get it together. Tell somebody, get it together. Tell somebody, wipe your face. Tell somebody, you got things to do. People are seeing places to go. Tell somebody, wipe your face. Stop mourning over what God has already rejected. Don't get stuck. Don't get stuck. Don't get stuck right there. Listen, 
is what he says. The first one. And the Lord said to Samuel, how long will you mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thine oil, thy, thy horn with oil and go, and I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite. For I have appoint, I provided me myself. I provided me a king there amongst his sons. Listen, so Jesse gets up. I'm, I'm paraphrasing for a minute. Jesse, I mean, not Jesse. Uh, Samuel gets up and Samuel goes to uh, uh, Bethlehem and he sees the elders in the city and they're afraid and trembling because here comes the prophet of the nation. Here, here comes the one who now, who, uh, who has ushered in uh, this, 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 uh, this period of this, this time. He is the last judge and now he ushers in the monarchy. He ushers in uh, uh, where we no longer have judges, but now we have kings in the land. And so he ushers that in. This is the prophet. And so, and so he comes to, Jesse, uh, uh, to Bethlehem and he seeks Jesse and he tells the people who are there, we're going to make a sacrifice, go and prepare it. And he gets Jesse and his sons and he consecrates them, Come on. makes them ready. Make some ready. Here, can I say something to you? It's going to be all kind of people around you who look like they're ready, but they ain't the one. <laughs> I'm trying to help you understand because Jesse comes. Jesse gets Jesse. Uh, Samuel comes against Jesse and all his sons, and he consecrates them because he Samuel doesn't know. He don't know who it is. So he says, I'm going to consecrate all of them. Only to find out that the one it is ain't even there. Hey, right, pass all before him. You know, I read the text to you. That pass before him. It's not him. It's not him. It's not him. Do you have another? Yeah, I got one. But see, he's out working. He, he's in the field. Tending the sheep. You go sin for him. We, we're not going to sit down. <laughs> we can't rest. We're not going to sit in the position of completion until he comes. And so, and so, so what, what I love about the text, and the text goes on and it passes on. And, and I, I want you, I want to read the verse 13 to you in the same chapter. Verse 13 says this, and, and it says this, Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose, went up, and went to Ramah. <laughs> now I want you to understand something. Because Ramah is the place where his assignment comes to an end. It is the place where he goes and the place where he dies. It is the place where Samuel, the prophet to the nation, goes. And the only other account that you see in, in, in regards to, to David is when David is running from Saul and he goes to Ramah. And he tells Saul, I mean, he tells uh, uh, Samuel what's taking place. And Samuel hides him and takes him to a place. And Samuel, and Saul comes looking for both of them and, not find, and doesn't find either one. And it's soon after that that we find in chapter 25, there's no more discussion. There's no more acts of the prophet Samuel. There's no more miracles performed. And in chapter 25, we see that he dies because he has completed his assignment. The last thing that he is to do is to anoint the King David. And then he goes to Ramah to lie down. I, I, I got to hurry up. I got to hurry up. I, I'm still on, on, on my first point. So, so the uh, point A, uh, the first point, there are some assignments coming to you uh, because, they, they, because others have failed to follow the instruction of their assignment. I want you to understand the importance of, of even Samuel doing what God told him to do. In the midst of mourning, the instructions came. He did those things, went to Ramah, and that's where he rested. That's where he was laid and went to sleep. Hear this. I want you to hear this. This is what Samuel said to Saul. Because Saul now gets, gets his focus twisted. I want to talk just for a few minutes. I ain't got but 12 minutes left, but I, I'm going to talk just about two of those, about folk who get their focus twisted. Because, because he's, he's the king. And he's giving, been giving some instruction. And... He's a king that goes to war, and he's a king that has victory. But now he's going to war against the Philistines, and he's going to war against them. And, and listen, Samuel's not there. He's going to war against the Philistines, and Samuel's not there. 
to tell him that it's okay to go up against the Philistines to war. See, because they, uh, 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 the kings will rely heavily on the prophet, and they would ask the prophet, should I go up? Will I have victory? And he's waiting. <laughs> and he's waiting, and the Philistines are coming. He's waiting, and the Philistines' crowd is growing larger. He's waiting, and, and they're coming in from the north and the south, the east and the west. They're coming all around. There. They're gathering all around them, and he's waiting. And, and, and listen, and while he's waiting... While Saul's waiting, the people that are with him get to become afraid. They get nervous. <laughs> you know how folk will look at stuff and they'll, they'll help you make a mistake. <laughs> I'm, try, I'm trying to help you understand some stuff. Some folk around you will get so nervous that they'll help you do the wrong thing. So the people, listen, the people start leaving. The Bible says that some hide in caves and some hide in rocks and some go up high. They're, they're, high. they're, they're starting to remove themselves from Saul. These mighty men of valor, these, these individuals that have come, that have known victory in war. They've come to this place now with the Philistines and they're afraid. And, they're, and so because, because Samuel has not showed up, the people start withdrawing. <laughs> Listen to this. Because the people start withdrawing, Saul decides he's going to do what he's not supposed to do. Because people will help you make a mistake. And the people are withdrawing themselves from Saul. Can I say something to you? Don't you be afraid when people start withdrawing themselves from you. Don't you be afraid when folks start leaving. Because God has a plan. And his plan oftentimes requires that what is done is done by few. Because when it's done by many, <laughs> you think you did it. When it's done by many, you think that the, the victory is yours because it was, it, was, it was brought by your own hand. But the Lord says, let them go. For those that go aren't supposed to be with you anyway. And those that go will only impede what I'm trying to do in your life. They're not going to impede me, says God. Hear me. Hear me. They're not going to impede me, says the Lord. But they're going to impede you. So let them go. The people withdraw themselves. Saul gets afraid. He gets scared. And so Saul decides that he's going to make the sacrifice. He's going to do what is only put in place for the priest to do. He is going to do what he is not allowed to do. And, and now this is, how, this is how God works. And this is what's so miraculous to me. And, and this is what sticks out to me, Co-Pastor, because, because even as he has just completed making this offering, I mean, not, not, not days, not weeks, but as soon as, he done, as he's done, guess what? Guess who shows up? Samuel. Samuel comes in, he's looking around. This is what Samuel says. And Samuel said, you have done foolishly, for you have not kept the commandment of the Lord your God, which he commanded you. For now the Lord would have established your kingdom over Israel forever. If you would have just stayed your position. If you would have just held on a little while longer, I want you to understand that the intensity to make a decision and to do what's contrary to what God says, it intensifies right before the blessing of the Lord comes. I want you to understand it intensifies because it's right before Samuel arrives. That Saul looks around and all the people are just are, are dispensing. They're just getting away. They're running. They're hiding. And he's looking around. He's like, I got to do something because in a minute, it's only going to be a few of us to fight all these Philistines. So I got to do something. So he does what the Lord says you're not given authority to do. Come on. Wow. Samuel says, for now, for now, the Lord would have established your kingdom over Israel forever, but now your kingdom shall not continue. In that, this, this, this just, I, I don't know about you, but, but I tremble thinking in the midst of a moment when I do something that God said not to do and the Lord reminds you of what it could be versus what it's going to be. He, he says to Moses, look over. Into the promised land. He said, I want you to see it, but you'll never step foot in it. Because he did not follow the instructions. So here we have, here we have, here we have now 
uh, Samuel talking to Saul, he says, he says, but now your kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought for himself a man after his own heart. And the Lord has commanded him to be commander over his people. Because listen, because you have not kept what the Lord has commanded you. Because you have not kept what the Lord God has commanded you. I've got six minutes. Listen, I'm going to say this part. I'm going to say this part. And then I'm going I'm, I'm to have to stop and I have to pick up next week. Listen. Uh, this is what the Bible says. He says to them, he says, fill your horn and go. I'm sending to you, I'm sending you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided myself a king amongst the sons. So Samuel did as the Lord said and went to Bethlehem. Samuel followed the instruction of the Lord. Wipe your face and move forward. I, I, I don't even know how I want to say this. The Lord, the Lord has said and told his prophets to fill their horns with oil. For there is a new anointing that has already been prepared for you. And the prophet is on her way looking for you. The Lord will tell her who it is when she sees him. But she doesn't even know. But the horn is being prepared. The horn, I want you to understand, in, in, in those moments, in those times, they had a horn. They had they, they, they had a, 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 a instrument whereby it's, it's called the shofar. And, and they would pour oil into the shofar. And they would use that as a sign, as a signal of pouring the oil over the head of the king. And, 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 and so, 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 but I want you to understand something now that, that in this day, in this time, there's an anointing that's been released to the prophet. And all the prophet has to come and do is to speak a thing. And I want you to understand that there's a new oil. I want you to understand there's some things that have been going on that you don't know anything about. And I've seen a rumbling. I've seen a turning. I've seen a churning in the prophet. I've seen a churning in the prophet of this house. I've seen her uncomfortable. And I've seen her just not knowing what's happening and what's going on. And she says, I feel something, but I don't know what it is. And it's a turning. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a preparation. The of the apothecary, the one who makes the perfume, the anointed perfume, the, makes, the one who makes the anointing oil to pour out to his people. It says, get, get your horn. <laughs> she has her horn. And I'm telling you, her horn is being filled. And there's going to be a release of the word of the Lord spoken over your life. For all those who follow the instruction and do what God says, there's going to be a release. There's going to be a release out of her mouth that says what thus says the Lord and gives us the way of God that seems contrary to men, but it's God's plan in his way. Listen, listen. The Bible says, that he consecrated Jesse and his sons, inviting them to the sacrifice. So it was uh, when they came that he looked at Eliab and said, uh, surely the Lord's uh, uh, anointing is before me. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees, for man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at his heart. And this is point number two. It's probably the last one I'm going to get to. There are people who look the part, but the father has an internal qualifier that the external qualifier cannot match. God has an internal qualifier. He doesn't look at the outside. The, the father looks at the heart. It's internal. If you stare around folk long enough, you'll find out and you'll pick it up because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. But it's going to take some time because they're going to say all the kind of stuff you want to hear first. And it's not until they run out of, a, out of all kind of stuff to, 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 to blow you up and, and, and blowing smoke all up your tail and, and, and saying all the nice stuff to you and saying all the stuff you want to hear. Because see, the truth is, too many of us are waiting for somebody to come and just tell us all the wonderful things about ourselves. And when they come and tell you, then they got your hook, line, and sinker. They're going to pull you in. But the Lord says, don't you look at the external. For there is an internal qualifier. 
that the internal cannot stand against. The external cannot match the internal qualifier. For the Lord looks at the heart. I'm going to stop right there. Oh, I got, I got, we, we got this whole several chapters of 1 Samuel as we dissect the sections. We hadn't even got to David yet. We are just setting the foundation. Yes, sir. This is the anatomy of the divine assignment. This is what God wants you to understand as he has placed an assignment in you. And let me say to you, some of you all, I want you to hear this, that the Lord is getting ready to awaken the assignment that's in your life. It's been sleep and been dormant. It's been uh, eyes closed. You have forgotten. It's been sleep for so long that you have forgotten that it's even prevalent. It's even there. You have forgotten that it's there. You've forgotten what the Lord has said concerning you. You know how I know you've forgotten? Because you've drifted off to other things. And you've lost your focus. But the Lord says, I'm getting ready to awaken some stuff in you. It's going to cause you to come back to that thing that's needful and that thing that's most important. And that is the Lord's assignment over your life.